This week on Entertaining People, it's American classic macaroni and cheese, but not once, not twice, mac and cheese three ways. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. I'm Porter William, and I've been entertaining, event planning, and cooking for over 25 years. Finally, I get to share my secrets with you. No matter if you have a one-room apartment or a grand-scale estate, we'll learn how to entertain from San Francisco to the beaches of Spain, from menu planning to tablescapes, I'll teach you how to entertain from the heart. From a memory, make a memory. Join me as we entertain the world one table at a time, next on Entertaining People. I'm Porter William and you're watching Entertaining People. I'm just unwrapping a Colby Cheddar right here because today our episode is all about mac and cheese. And as I said, not just one way, two, but it's mac and cheese three ways today on Entertaining People. You know, my brother and I were kind of latchkey kids. Both my parents worked and so we got home early from school and the one thing that we were allowed to cook was macaroni and cheese. We weren't allowed to turn the stove on for anything else. And in those days, it came in boxes with kind of this magic powder that you mix together with a little bit of milk. And my big brother, Jeff, would actually boost me up to the stove so we could stir it. And the one I'm gonna do for you today actually has five cheeses in it. What you just saw me do is I'm gonna cube up these beautiful chunks of sharp cheddar. Most of the melting action is all gonna happen stove top, and we're gonna do that in a roux. This is good old processed American cheese that comes in the box, shelf stable. I think this cheese would probably outlast most marriages, but only in the best way because it tastes great and it never fails. It melts perfectly, and I use a half of large block, and then a good old American Philadelphia from the East Coast. Um, in fact, you can just break this with your hands, a cream cheese. I, on my classic, like chunky ham inside my mac and cheese. Now, these we want these bites to be a little bit smaller. I'd say probably um, 10 to 15 slices. Just turn it and let's just go into cubes right across the top. You know, mac and cheese is simple. Some people want to make it really complex and really difficult, but my rule of thumb is pick three or four cheeses that you like. Make sure you've got a creamy one with a hard one, a, sh a sharp rolled cheese and just simply add the meat of your choice. So we've got our cheeses set. I'm gonna just sprinkle just about a half a cup of Parmesan. That with the um, ham is gonna give us enough salt content. We're really not gonna have to salt any of this. There's our mac and cheese three ways right there. Let's learn how to do a roux. Remember what I said was that the roux is the basis of any white sauce. It's a bechamel sauce actually, but a roux is kind of like a family legacy. Everybody has their own. The point of it is, is that you just have to learn the feel. I eyeball this. So if we were doing equals, we'd be eight tablespoons to eight tablespoons, but just take your flour and we go right in there. You want it bubbling right around the edge, but watch that heat, three, and I do half of my quantity first. And you want to start with your whisk and get in there, control your heat, and you'll see how that comes together. Now the secret of a smooth roux, see how that all just completely compacted? That's what we want. Now the longer you leave it on the heat, the browner it's going to get. For mac and cheese, we want a light roux. We're going to stir and add our milk in. Anybody can do this. You say bechamel and all these rare sauces that the master cooks. If you know me and you watch entertaining people, you know I'm not a master cook, but I absolutely love to make things that people like to eat. And I'm gonna bring this over to my board. There's our bechamel. Look at that. Perfect. So now I've got my pasta in the pot. I've got my casserole ready to be prepped. And I'm going to add all of my cheese and my ham together. So easy when we can mix everything at once. You're gonna want a big spoon or a spatula. I like when it's kind of slotted just to get this turned up a little bit. Get our mac and cheese all mixed together. Now there's a couple schools of thought on this. Some people will put this back on the stove after they've added the bechamel and let the cheese melt down, which we may do. I just simply pour everything into the casserole and let it bake slowly and it'll mix together all on its own. Look at that beautiful American classic macaroni and cheese, five cheeses. All right, now here's a little twist that I like to do. Now normally we put a breadcrumb top, but I got these Colby slices that come prepped from the deli. I just like to lay a couple right across the top, just in kind of a nice 
nice pattern which is going to melt out. I think in this case, with this, probably five will do it. Set that one right there. And then I like to sprinkle with a little bit of breadcrumbs. Actually a lot of breadcrumbs. In fact, we can have a little bit of fun with those. And the last thing, because there can never be too much cheese and mac and cheese. Well, there it is. Mac and cheese, probably a hundred million ways. I'm gonna put it into an oven, 375, probably about 30 minutes. You want this golden brown, all bubbly. I like mine crispy, but cook it however you like it. Let's get this in the oven. When we come back, we'll be teaching you our second mac and cheese, which is a bow tie with crab, and then we've got a chanterelle and a mushroom. I'm Porter William, I'll be right back. This week on Entertaining People, it's American classic macaroni and cheese, but not once, not twice, mac and cheese three ways. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Well, welcome back. I'm Porter William, and this is Entertaining People. And today, if you're just joining us, it's mac and cheese three ways. We've got a classic American, which is already baking and bubbling in the oven. And now I'm onto something kind of exotic. It's a thick noodle, wonderful chanterelle with mascarpone and truffle oils. So we're gonna talk about that. I've just drained my pasta, and I've added about a half a cube of butter. I'm just gonna set this on the stove until I'm ready for it. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about some choices in mushrooms this time of year we don't have a lot of exotic brushes available but you'll find these really great dried melange of champignon basically a mixture of mushrooms that are available look in your local store and if you don't have them ask your purveyor you simply open them up put them in a bowl with a little bit of water and literally within about 30 minutes they're completely hydrated and they really taste just as good as the fresh ones so i've had these soaking for just about 20 or 30 minutes and i want to get these down to just more of a bite size element my hands right on my block. I'm just going to drain these off. Now this in the bottom of the bowl is why I did this in a glass bowl for you. This is a beautiful mushroom consomme. It's a fantastic juice and I'm just going to add it right now into my pasta. It's going to help flavor that deep, deep, earthy, woodsy feel that we get with, uh, with mushrooms. So grab your favorite knife and just bring these into bite size. Those are ready to go into my bowl. We're just going to continue to chop and combine ingredients into the same bowl. I'm gonna grab a saute pan and I'm gonna put another cube of butter and a little bit of olive oil on the stove. And I'm gonna get a hit of garlic. We're just gonna saute up these mushrooms. Follow me over to the stove. I'd say about two to three tablespoons of softened butter right into the skillet. I'll get that out of the way for you. And go ahead and bring your heat up. And we're gonna do some olive oil and butter. The reason why is the smoking point is different and this is gonna allow us to bring the temperature a little bit higher without burning it. As soon as you have that butter melting just like that, go ahead and add in your beautiful mushroom mix. Boy, those are great. Then I'm gonna grab some garlic. And one of my favorite tricks when I'm out of a spoon is just turn it around and grab the handle that you're using. And let's go with about a full tablespoon of minced garlic. Turn your heat down and we're just gonna do a quick saute. And get the moisture out. And if you can do this at home, learn to toss. This is great fun just to practice over the sink, but just push it forward and pull it back. Push it forward and pull it back. Okay, we're gonna let those sit and cook for just about two minutes. Let's start with our beautiful sauteed mushrooms going in our wide noodle pasta. Take any pasta you like, just make sure that this one is kind of soft and delicate, not like the hard elbow. Our piece de la resistance, this is our secret weapon, our bullet in our holster. This is mascarpone cheese. Wonderfully rich with a sweetness to it that is just gonna make these mushrooms really, really stand out and pop. The next ingredient is really the high notes in this recipe and this is rare truffle oil. Truffle season just ended. I'm gonna use two truffle oils. This is my dark or the Tweak Noir, the black truffle, and then I'm gonna lace it with a light white truffle oil right on top. A little goes a long way if you've never had this on eggs. It's fantastic. And we're basically ready to plate this up. Smaller casserole, more delicate. This will probably serve four people as a main dish. Look at all those mushrooms coming out. Really, oh, and smell the truffle oil. Okay, we're gonna just pat that down just a little bit. 
Since we have a couple extra fresh mushrooms, I'm gonna sprinkle them right over the top. That's gonna to look great when it comes out. And I've got my grated Parmesan. That's gonna give us a salt content. And with this, I do like the hit of black pepper. So let's do some fresh ground right up top. You can always add a little at the table, but why not make the flavors perfect before they arrive? This week on Entertaining People, it's American classic macaroni and cheese, but not once, not twice, mac and cheese three ways. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. The entire series of Entertaining People is now available on DVD. To order, go to entertainingpeople.com. From paella parties to formal dinners, brunches to beach parties, the menus are endless. This series is a perfect gift idea and a great reference tool, so you can throw all the parties we do on the show in your own home. Log on to entertainingpeople.com and click on DVD or email DVD at entertainingpeople.com. We're back. It's uh, mac and cheese number three. I can smell my classic American, which we did if you're just joining us in the first segment of today's show. Let's hope it's bubbling. And just as I remember it, come on down here with me. Oh, and there it is. This looks fantastic. Check that out. Exactly how it should come out. Crispy on the top, bubbly. You see how those four or five slices of the Colby just sealed this all together and that little bit of the Parmesan right on top. This is exactly what we're looking for. And I like to just dress it up a little bit at the very end, but you know what? I can't stand it because this is really a party for just you and me. I just gotta get in there just a little bit and see. Oh, I want a chunk of that ham. Hold on. Wow, this is good, you guys. Hot, hot, hot. Mmm, that's it. Classic mac and cheese, the American way. It'll bring you right back to your childhood. Now this next recipe definitely won't. This is definitely a high-end recipe and I'm gonna go ahead and drain my pasta. We've done this before and if I didn't tell you on the last segment, remember, don't ever rinse your pasta because you want that starch on there to help hold the sauce. Our main flavor here is crab and I wanna talk about how to use crab and save on the pocketbook. A little budget-minded sense today. First of all, this is actually a canned crab. And on top of that, I've got the wonderful lump Dungeness, which is fresh, and this is pretty pricey. So what I like to do is I like to use the base crab as the main flavor, and then I put the high-end crab, if you will. These are these, these, these crabs, they live uptown. They're up on the fancy side of the dock, all right? I like to uh, put these on top to just add that big bite of the crab meat. First thing I'm gonna do is just put a few scallions into this one. Remember your knife skills with those fingers down. I don't like a whole lot of onion because we don't wanna overpower the crab in this, but just enough to get a little bit of flavor and a little bit of color. We're gonna start with a Greek style yogurt. I don't know if you've ever had one of these, but it's almost like a cheese. It's extremely thick. And I'm just gonna put an entire container of the Greek style yogurt in. Go ahead and pull that into your mixing bowl. Just like that. The next ingredient that we're gonna use is a creme fraiche. If you've never had a creme fraiche, it's really, it's a French product, but it's kind of the uh, French version of a sour cream, and this has a beautiful sweet taste. It's often used in desserts. This is gonna bring in the sugar elements, and whenever I have crab, I like a little bit of sugar added. It just brings out the freshness of the meat. Same rule goes with lobster, and the other rule, which works perfectly, is sherry. And I'm just gonna put about a tablespoon or two of the sherry, and I'm gonna add my crab meat all at once. Now you're gonna to wanna to toss this very gingerly. Do not break up the bow ties. That's part of the fun is having each of the little bow ties in just probably about a quarter teaspoon of fresh minced garlic. We're gonna put that in there. And always work with a wooden spoon if you have it handy. And we'll just toss that together. You see the chives coming through? Oh, that's great. I can smell the crab and the yogurt and the creme fraiche. If you have a little bit of Tabasco or some type of pepper sauce, the tiniest bit for a little kick, or just substitute a bit of um, cayenne pepper, and I'm gonna put a drizzle of some olive oil right on top. That literally is all there is to it. Our beautiful bow tie crab. 
and I'm actually going to plate this individually as we bake them. It's more elegant. When we come out with the service, I'm going to have a folded napkin under it. Each one, and we're going to top this with some panko breadcrumbs. So let me show you how these go together. We'll start with our first one. Do not overfill these. This is a very, very rich dish. A little goes a long way. Here's our first one. Let's pull our second one in. We're going to top with our panko. These are thick, coarse breadcrumbs that come from Japan. We want to top with some grated Parmesan. And then we talked about this beautiful, oh my gosh, this is the upper neighborhood. Mm, beautiful crab right on top. Look at that fantastic cloth. This is how I want to top this. Make sure everybody has beautiful, oh that's good, whole crab cloth. The color is what we're after, the pink, right there, right in the middle, and then just a little bit around the sides on each one. Remember, kitchen rule is always the last bit of crab goes for the chef. All right, now when you put these in the oven, don't do it one by one, you're gonna break your back. Just get a regular cookie sheet, get that out of the way for you, and put your individual servings on the cookie sheet. Also, if they boil over, this is gonna protect you, and it's just gonna be much easier to balance. We're gonna put this in our oven, and let those cook, same temperature, 375, just about 30 minutes. This week on Entertaining People, it's American classic macaroni and cheese, but not once, not twice, mac and cheese three ways. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. The entire series of Entertaining People is now available on DVD. To order, go to entertainingpeople.com. From paella parties to formal dinners, brunches to beach parties, the menus are endless. This series is a perfect gift idea and a great reference tool, so you can throw all the parties we do on the show in your own home. Log on to entertainingpeople.com and click on DVD or email DVD at entertainingpeople.com. We're back on Entertaining People. I'm just finishing chopping up some scallions just for a little garnish on our mac and cheese three ways. And I think we're ready for our final two to come out of the oven. I'm smelling that truffle and four mushroom. And in fact, it is there and it is ready. Look at that. You can see all the juices from the mascarpone and everything coming together. This is really made as a casserole. I guess you could have a buffet with mac and cheese three ways, but let's see what those beautiful high-end crab ones look like. You want two hot pads? Oh, there they are, there they are. Wonderful, look at that. Our beautiful bow tie pasta. And I'm gonna let those cool for just a second. I'm gonna show you exactly how I would present these in a more elegant format. You want a basic white plate and grab a regular dinner napkin. I'm just gonna have you set it on top and just fold in your corners. Take this corner in, this corner in, just like all fours, looks really fancy. Grab your hot pad because you want this piping hot and let's pick the best one. I think this one really looks good. This one's gonna be for me as well. Reach in there, grab that and let's plate that. Just, oh, beautiful couple chives right on the top, just enough green is that elegant macaroni and cheese. Never before seen. All original recipes available at entertainingpeople.com. And you know, these smell so good. I think I have to have a bite of each and every one. I tried my American mac with ham. Now this is how you want your macaroni and cheese. Thick and solid, almost like a lasagna. It's a perfect bite. And I like this. Love the crunchy. Can you get in there and see that? Mm, smells beautiful. Here come our four mushrooms. The truffle oils, the white and the dark, are coming through. I can smell them just rising up. Nice cream sauce. Beautiful, beautiful. And then this gorgeous, I gotta take it. Should I take it? Should I take it? Okay, let me get my beautiful bow tie. That's the crust you want. Now there's the difference with that panko. You can see how crispy it is. Gotta get my finger in there and grab that. Woo, it's hot and it's perfect, and let's take just a bite. All right, you and me, if you want to cook mac and cheese three ways, cook them individually, take them to a party, cook them in your own home. You're gonna love this, a high-end dinner party for pennies. Let's try first my four mushroom. Mm. Oh wow, that is really excellent. Smooth and creamy, again, all the ingredients. And I've gotta try my American classic again. 
with a big old hunk of ham. Oh, love this. Wow. Mm. That is beautiful. We are right on the salt content. The salt is perfect. Don't add any salt to that recipe. And then how about our crab bow tie with our panko breadcrumbs and our sherry. You can smell the sherry notes. The, the wine is coming right off the top. Oh, wow. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. We need a nice glass of wine or sparkling water to go with this. Well, that does it for mac and cheese, three ways here on entertaining people. And you know, whether you're cooking from a memory, like I say, you can always make a memory. My memory was my brother and I after school with a box of macaroni and cheese all alone, getting that snack in before we went out to play. And of course, these beautiful high-end truffled chanterelle mushroom things that we're finding in the finest restaurants all over the world. And then just our great homemade crab bow tie. Cook it all, it's easy. If somebody's done you a favor, make them some mac and cheese, bring it over to their house. I hope you felt special today. I've had a great time with you. I'm Porter William. Join me next time as I entertain the world one table at a time. Can't wait to see you next time.